Hi, I'm Andy from Raycom. I'm here today with Jörg from Phonak, and we're going to take you through the fabulous Roger earpiece system. So, Jörg, yep. um, tell us a little bit about Phonak as a, as a company and, um, and why Roger, why the system, what was it, what was it all about? Okay, we are Phonak Communications from Murten in Switzerland, and we are the wireless competence center for a far larger group called Sonova. Sonova is doing medical devices, hearing aids and other things for, it's all around audio and hearing. Mm -hmm. And we can do wireless on our own technology, on our own proprietary platform. And this is a device, uh, this is a technology which enables us to bring wireless audio signals in very, very small formats directly into the ear of a presenter. Yeah, this so is the key point, isn't it? Right. Harping back to the medical world, yeah. it's you've been able to miniaturize mm. the receiver because it's been required for medical hearing aids in the medical world. It's been required for that. So I guess you thought, hang on a minute, there's another application here. Exactly. So we found the world of professional audio, broadcast, uh, filmmaking, location sound and all these things. And yes, we could see there's a large market for that because exactly the same usage and the same benefits you are looking for. You like to have audio very discreetly, basically invisible inside of the ear of the presenter. And you like not to distract them or distract the audience by seeing cables mm. or coils or belt pegs or which you know is, which is what we're so used to seeing yeah and, right and yeah they are a distraction for the for the viewer mm -hmm. you know they say why have they got that there or for the people that that fully understand why they're there they're going oh yeah that's like uh, that's like a cheat cheat cable going in you know with roger you don't see anything, do you? you know, it's uh, it looks like you're very and and the presenters themselves and the talent themselves feel a lot more freedom because they haven't got cables and sure. packs and yeah, yeah. And also imagine a presenter very very often has to wear at least one belt pack anyway because mm. they are wired with, with a the microphone. Mic. Yep. So one belt pack for sure they have to wear. They really do not like to wear a second one. It's getting quite bulky. Maybe they have to move. They have to walk. They would like to sit down or so, and then it's. Uh, it could be a difficulty. Also, when, when ladies, for example, are wearing dresses, it's sometimes yeah. really not easy where to hide the, the belt pack. So what we do and what really our core competence is, we can audio very, very, very small, miniaturized. We can work on, <coughs> on, on really small batteries. So also power consumption is a big mm. issue. And we, we, I really can say we mastered that. Um, yeah, and this is the basic and, strength and, of the and system. Why, and, and, and Roger, I mean, because you you did have a product before that uh, yeah. was, was quite popular in the market. Um, some of you may know already, I think it was the Invisity product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where does uh, Invisity, or where does Roger differ from Invisity? Where does it, what does it bring to the table? <coughs> Invisity was based on an old technology which we designed more than 20 years ago. It was VHF. It was VHF like, based. Yeah, yeah. And uh, first of all, VHF in many, many areas of the spectrum is not license free. So the user always has to take care, where can I work yeah, with it? Yeah. Then we had to cut the whole workable area in several slices in megahertz, something around seven megahertz. So it was, it was quite difficult for the user always to have the right product, where it's very, very easy with Roger. It's just one earpiece, it's a variety of transmitters and other accessories, and it's license free all over the world. It is sounding far better. It's digital and you can really hear it. it everybody is saying it, uh, it seems to be louder and clearer. It's definitely not louder, but the intelligibility is enhanced by far. Mm. So it's, it's really much more yeah, nicer. It, it does product. actually sound yeah. louder, but it's because yeah. it's clearer. Right. Yeah, yeah. And there's no hiss. No hissing. And also with the Invisity, we had statics, means you were maybe walking around a little bit and all of a sudden you had shh, 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 or noises like that. We, all these things we do not have. In the Invisity system, we needed programming. You needed to program the frequency of the transmitter mm. and with another software, the frequency in the receiver. Yeah. Here, we do not need it. We simply bring devices together Great. and make click. And so you've, you've taken new technology that you've uh, spend billions of pounds developing for the medical world mm. and allowed us in the broadcast world to, to benefit from its advantages. Yes. Which is all good. Um, well, look, I think what we need to do now is uh, the Roger system has, has got quite a few different components with it. 
And what we'd like to do really now is, is go through each of the components separately so you, you understand where, it, where, it, where each part fits in the whole system. Clearly, the, uh, the star of the show is this little tiny thing here, which is the, the Roger earpiece. Um, you can see, very, very small is its, is its key feature. It's got a nice smooth finish to it, fits directly into your ear, and um, we'll, we'll show you in a moment how, how well it hides when you've, when you've got it in your ear. Um, yeah, tell us, uh, tell us about this little boy. What's, what's inside it? Oh, inside we have uh, obviously uh, the battery, you need power for that. So you open the compartment, maybe you can see it like this, you open the compartment. Later we will take a battery, you put it in, you close it. Once you closed it, it's already power on. You do have here a little plastic feeler. This plastic feeler is not an antenna as many, many. I was going to say, a lot of people think this is the antenna. Yeah, no, it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. You need that to take the earpiece out of your ear again. Yeah. So don't take it away, don't cut it off. It will still work, but you most likely cannot take it out of your ear. Yeah, so I mean, the, the unit fits useful. so, so closely right. down inside your ear that yeah. you can't actually grab the end of it unless you've got that little spigot there to, to, to pull it out, which is... Inside, we have our own proprietary chip. So the device which enables the earpiece to get wireless signal in such a tiny size inside the ear. Then we have at the end, the, the loudspeaker, for the audio and the green tip you see on the top is a cleaning system. It's called it's called Ceramix filters or wax guards. Yeah, that's what people know as the, right. the wax guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's all you need. Okay, so the, the little pieces that go well, the uh, accessories with that, of course, the batteries. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, the Phonak A10 battery, and uh, it's it's a standard kind of hearing aid battery. It is, but. I want to make a point here that, and this is not to uh, to increase Phonax or Raycom's profits, but you must use this Phonak branded battery. There are a lot of these batteries on the market that just don't have the kind of uh, lifetime yeah. uh, that the Phonak battery does have. And if ever we get a, a conversation going where somebody says, oh, you know, I'm not getting the kind of life that I want from my earpiece. Or with the battery. Nine times out of ten, it's because it's yeah. not a phone app battery. Maybe I can explain a little bit on that. All right, as okay. long as you do have a hearing aid, it's absolutely fine to take any battery you like or need, depending on your budget. But this is not a hearing aid, it's a receiver. So wireless is involved. And wireless will demand also on a receiver side, far more power consumption. That's the reason why you need a high quality battery. And the Phonak A10 battery, by the way, it's a zinc air battery, we will show that later, provides enough power for at least one full working day on one earpiece. Yeah, which is incredible. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, long, that's, yeah. 10 hours, really, yeah. um, if you're working days, 10 hours, of course. But uh, let me just show you about the battery. Um, it's, uh, as, as Jörg was saying, it, it's zinc air. And the first thing you need to do is, is to give it some air. So you open up the back there, and in the back of the battery is a, is a tiny, little, tiny little hole that lets the air come in. Very important, now we've, we've spoken about this mm -hmm. in the past, that you need to let this battery breathe for a little bit. Like only about a minute, it's good and enough. it starts the process of the battery working. Uh, you may find that you can you can put it in, get it moving straight away, and it will work, but it will greatly reduce the, the lifetime of the battery. Right. So you make sure it's it's breathed a little bit, and uh, so it's ready to go. And then, Jörg, this is and all very exciting stuff. You can put the battery in there. So the battery, and this is the battery door, or battery compartment, how we say. You just put it in. You just close it and, there's and now a, there's a little all you have to there. do. Right, exactly. And, yes. and that is switching the unit on and off. There are, you know, obviously you don't want to be putting many buttons or controls on that, it's so small. Uh, so literally to switch it on and off, you open the battery door and, and, and close the battery door. And then it's up and running. Now we, we spoke about earlier on about the, uh, the little green tip on the end here, um, which, is, which is known as the wax guard. Yeah. Uh, it's a fact, you know, you're gonna have Potentially, you're going to have wax in your ear, and uh, it can block the end of this this unit. And you know, once again, if we get a, a, an issue where people have said oh, my my Rogers suddenly stopped working, nine times out of ten, it's because a little tiny little bit of wax 
has just sat inside the wax guard, blocked it up, and that'll be enough to cut the audio quite quickly. Um, it doesn't tend to happen during takes. It's usually in and out, insertion or removal, um, and then you know it's noticed straight away. And how do you cure this? Very, very simple. Um, we have a little ring of replacement wax guards here, and there's a little tool on the front which nicks the old wax guard off, which you can throw away, and then you move this tool around, and you literally just press onto the the, the replacement wax guard with the with the unit, just press hard on there, and it'll click into place. It's as simple as that. And and in reality, it's important, isn't it, to to clean your ears before you use it. Yeah. Um, uh, fortunately, I don't think humans produce wax that quickly that it'll start to build up during the day. Um, not wanted to dwell on the wax issue too much longer, but it is important. And, and actually, phone I can even give you a little starter pack of earbuds so that you can uh, clean your ear uh, before you before you insert the Roger. Right. Um, I mean, it's a good thing to do. And maybe maybe thinking about the two different roles which you very often have in production or on set. Uh, if you are the sound engineer, if you are the audio responsible person, you cannot go to any talent, we totally understand that, and talk about the, how clean the ears are, of course not. But with a little hint, you can make them aware that really using the right ear or left ear and having the ear free of anything would be a very, very good uh, help to have best success from this reason. This is of course true for any audio system, but here in particular with the earpieces, it's it's really very, very important. Good. So uh, with every uh, earpiece that you buy, you get um, a pack of wax guards to start you off. You get a pack of batteries to start you off, the, the earbuds as we talked about, and that all comes in this, this nice, nice little case, but uh, a carrying case and a, and a protector. And we find that a lot of uh, a lot of talent, a lot of presenters, for the obvious reasons, actually own their own mm. Phonak uh, Phonak unit, uh, their own Phonak Roger. Um, so they they'll pack it up at the end of the day and take it away with them. So it's it's useful to have that case. So uh, that's the earpiece. Well, is there anything more we want to say about that at the moment? I think maybe one thing right. about the soft wraps. Oh, we talk oh, a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. about the software. What we talk about now are the very small accessories like battery, like wax guard, and one thing is missing called the software it should be in here, I believe. Those are very little but very helpful foam stripes, let's say. And these foam stripes are, I hope you can see it, they look like that. You take one off and you stick it around the loudspeaker part of the earpiece and you do that in a spiral, let's say. You do that, you compress the foam, you put the earpiece in your ear, the foam will open up and then you have more isolation, so higher volume. And also you do have a better and even more reliable fit. Because imagine you have people, they have to run or they have to dance, or you have a quite crazy game show or something like that. Some people have the feeling that the earpiece could fall out. So for that, those soft wraps are very, very helpful. Yeah, I think Tiny it's also, really it also depends on how wide your ear canal is. Of course, so yeah, Some people sure, have yeah. very wide yeah. ear canals, some people narrow. I mean, I've got fairly narrow ear canals, and when I put that in and put it in the right way, uh, I don't really have any fear that it's gonna drop away, but I know that it's been useful for some people. And, and as you say, you, you really do get very strong isolation yeah. with the foam wrap around it and it, it puts in and, it, and it's very, very tight. Maybe last point, why we stick it like a spiral. Actually, actually the devices are shaped and cut it like that. Because if you do it in a spiral, then still air can go in and out of your ear. Reason is some people feel very, very um, a little bit dizzy even if the ear is totally closed and blocked. Mm. So that's the reason why we allow air to ventilate in and out of the ear. Yeah, sure. That's an interesting thing. And, and of course, um, putting a, a Roger earpiece in your ear is, is not just simply stuffing it in. There is a, there is a method yes. of, uh, of how you place the earpiece. and. Um, uh, and let's show you. I think we've got a we've got an earpiece uh, model um, that we can uh, show you how this uh, how this works.
And what we're going to look at now is the fitting of the Phonak earpiece in, in the ear. And this may seem like a, a, a silly thing to say, but it isn't just a case of shoving a, a, a Phonak Roger in your ear. There is a way of doing it and, and it works so much better if it's done in the right way. So yeah, tell us about, you're gonna show us on this, this model first of all. This is very, very important for people who are using the earpiece for the very first time because they are not used to it. So somebody has to explain to them how to do it. I had first showed you with our model ear and later we will see it in the real world. So make sure that the green tip, the wax guard, is on the device. Take control that the battery is in. Close it again because closing the device will uh, power on the earpiece. And then what I always do, I take the nylon feeler between my index finger and my thumb like this and I hold a little bit with the middle finger. The ear canal of all of us goes up. It doesn't go down, it goes up. So therefore have the curve please of the earpiece pointing upwards. And like holding it like this, you put it into the ear. And once you've done that, you even twist it a little bit. You twist it so that the curved part of the earpiece snugs nicely into your ear canal because the ear canal goes up and also a little bit like a curve. Mm. And this will give you very best fit of the device. Yeah, cool. Okay, so what's gonna happen now, uh, Jilly's come along and because I think her ears are probably more pleasant than mine, and she's going to show um, with the small amount of training that she's had, how to insert one of these, uh, these Roger ear pieces. Because it, it, it's very often is the, it's the talent or the presenter will want to put it in themselves. So you need to be able to show them how to do this. So oh, away you go. <laughs> There it is, and you can see that it's it's sat in quite nicely. You do feel as you give it a twist that it it suddenly just you find the right place and it just sits in and it it's there. And we were talking earlier on about using the foam wraps to get a better seal around the ear and make it feel more in place. I think once you've inserted it and you can feel it just sit into the ear canal, it really feels quite comfortable. And that, you know, I don't think. Um, that, yeah, very uh, true. There's going to be an Most issue with fallout yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, else. Yeah. Good. Okay, thanks. So, okay, now we'll uh, we'll move on to the uh, what you might say is the core of the system, the base station. Um, this is the the transmitter. Obviously, we've talked about the Roger earpiece, which is the receiver. Here we have the transmitter. Um, Let's have, a, let's have a look around it. Jörg, do you want to take us, take us around the transmitter yeah. and its various components? Starting on front, obviously you have here the antenna. You have here a knob where you can connect any devices like earpieces, but also other Roger devices you can connect just with pressing this. So that, that's like a syncing button, yeah. isn't it? Right, so. right. This is volume control and this is power on off. The device comes with a rack mount, so you can see on the sides there are a screw hole so that you can put it into a 19 inch rack. And that, one is, that, two. Is, that, is that a half U, is it? Or? This, is, this is even one third. One third So U, the so holder for two in, will, will make space here, here, and here. Okay. You can put it. And when we go to, to the back side, you have a combo input. This is XLR balanced or 6.3 uh, jack balanced. And we also have a consumer type unbalanced stereo in. When I say stereo, it means you maybe take just a stereo mini jack cable from your that's smartphone. So 3.5 mm. It's 3.5, exactly. 3 and of course, the socket inside will make stereo to mono because this is a mono device. This is a USB connector only for firmware updates because yeah, yeah, in yeah. the future we have new functionalities, new specifications. You can make updates here. This is a knob which we call NewNet. Sometimes you have finished your work, your project, your production, whatever you had, and you like to set everything to, let's say, zero. You clean everything, mm -hmm. all the connections you made, all the like settings a factory, you made. Like a factory right. reset. You do it by pressing this knob for seven seconds, and then it will reset and forget all networks and start a new network. Yeah. Last but not least, power in. That's basically all yeah. about... No, there's one thing. If you like to make a mount to the wall, you find these, do you say keyholes? 
yeah, for that. I guess so, yeah. So yeah. you put two screws, you hang it on the wall. Very nice way to, to put it even at a fixed installation in the studio, for example. Okay. There, there is one other thing that you've missed that, um, you know, I've been working with this product for quite a long time. And somebody asked me what this was and I didn't know. So let's see whether Jörg knows what it is. Uh, you ah, may have okay. noticed on okay. the back yeah. here, there's yeah, this yeah. little slot yeah. with, a, with a padlock next to it. It is definitely a nice idea. One of our engineers came up with that because you can buy, do we all remember the, when laptops, for example, were item for people stealing things? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can attach, how do you call that? Padlock? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a, you can put it here and then you lock it to somewhere so that people like, cannot like take it. Like, like a cable. Yeah. Cable yeah, it's, right. it's, it's actually a, um, <clears throat> a generic right. piece of equipment. It's ba like basically a the, cable, the, the, yeah. the size So basically it's to stop people stealing it, which um, I don't know what the, uh, the market for, for for stolen phone at base stations, but uh, for sure it's clearly somebody's recognized that there is a need and that's what that's for. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the base station. Okay, what we're going to talk about now is uh, the second transmitter that we, we'll talk about today. Um, and this is the, uh, the Roger Touchscreen, which is a, a standalone battery powered device. And we can just uh, switch him on there and you can see very nice clear display on there and, and, and lots, of, lots of functions, which um, I'm going to ask us yeah, to, to go through. More we'll than see. happy to do, Why of not? course. Why not? It, it is, of course, a transmitter. It is a standalone transmitter, yes, but it's also a microphone, so you can have it like a handheld microphone, and it's a remote control for the whole Roger system. Let's start with the maybe microphones. You can see here three microphone capsules built in. When you have hanging the device like this, we have a lanyard for that, then the microphone pattern will be directed directly to your mouth, basically, to have best intelligibility mm -hmm. and best speech quality. When you put it on a table, it will scan the area around this table and will try to focus to the person just talking. For the moment, for example, this device takes my voice because I'm talking. But if I came in now and started speaking, it, exactly. it concentrates on the, the source of the voice. Yeah. And also it will try idea. to minimize all ambient noise as much as the device can for speech clarity and for best intelligibility. What else do we have? We do have here a button where we can mute the microphone because maybe you say something which you do not want to transmit. You can unmute the device, of course. Uh, on the display, you find buttons like connect, for example. This is the connect button. The connect button, this is very, very obvious, makes just one thing. You have this device, you take another device like this, for example, you press connect and the devices are connected. Yeah, there's quite a few controls in there where you you, you control um, which devices are connected onto that microphone and how those how those devices operate once they're connected. Um, and the connect button, I guess, is is very similar to the uh, to the sync button on the on on the on the base station right. that we that we looked at before. Well, uh, it, it, just to point out at the moment, I mean, what's interesting is that this is a completely standalone product. It doesn't need uh, the base station to create the connection to the to the Roger earpiece. Yeah. And it's also a mobile device, so it will run on batteries for 10 hours. Just in case it's totally empty, the battery will recharge with our power supply in two hours. So a lot of flexibility and a lot of ways to use it mobile. When you use it as a standalone transmitter, you have a 3.5 input here. So you plug in a, a mini jack for that. This is the USB for charging. What else do we have? It's also, as I said, it's also a controlling device and a remote control for mm. things. Imagine you have, a, I don't know, in a talk show, a lady and an elder gentleman are talking. They are all on one base station, so on one network or channel. But the gentleman likes to have it very, very loud in his ear, whereas the lady likes it more moderate and medium volume mm -hmm. level. If so, you cannot control it from here because you just have one volume and also your audio feed just has one volume. With this device, you go near to the ear of the presenter and then by typing plus minus, you can control the individual volume setting of each and every earpiece. Yeah. So for some, quite soft, for others, very, very loud, very helpful. And you can switch earpieces on and off. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you've got some control over 
the functionality without having to mess with the ear or take the unit out and put it right. back in. It, it simply stays it, in, in. It's a remote ear. control yeah. for a Roger as well. Right. Yeah. Last but not least, you can also write and read names. So if you have three or four or five earpieces, you always can say, this is for Andy, this is for Jilly, this is for York, and so on. You can read it in the display of the device. Yeah, because, I mean, this is something that we, we haven't mentioned yet, but um, obviously the, the number of Roger receivers that you can have on the system from either this transmitter or, or this yeah. one is an unlimited amount of receivers, as you know, as with uh, with, with most most radio devices. So there could be sets with several Roger earpieces on, and you need to identify whose is whose, um, and you can do that with the with the touchscreen. So you know, it's a standalone microphone and transmitter, which is very very useful, um, but it has a lot of other functionality as well, which which you'll find. Um, you know, very worthwhile on, on a set. Right. Maybe last but not least, because we were talking already about the base station and the touchscreen microphone, these two devices can work together in one network. Means you maybe have one earpiece and you have one base station, that's fine. You take the audio from somewhere, from your mixing desk, from your audio intercom, whatever, you feed it into the base station. In addition to that, you would like to have this because somebody is on set and via this microphone, this person likes to talk directly to the earpiece of the presenter. You can do that easily. You just go with a touchscreen microphone to the base station, you press connect, and now these two devices are connected in the same network. As long as you have audio here, always this will have priority. But yeah. if audio has stopped here, everybody can talk freely via this device directly into the ear of the presenter. Yeah, so it could be um, you know, your main audio feed is coming from here. Uh, everybody's hearing that on set. Um, they take a break for five minutes. Um, it's possible then that um, this can be used to, to speak to somebody who I don't know, perhaps they don't want to be approached directly yeah, yeah. or, example, yeah. you know, and Happens. they can just, uh, an assistant or a, a, another prompter can just make a, a quick uh, a quick conversation there. But yeah, this will always take precedent over, yeah. over this when it comes yeah. to the audio feed. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the, uh, the Roger touchscreen. Now we're going to look at uh, the next product, and this is the uh, the Roger Repeater. Now this is uh, a product which provides assistance to the whole system in, in a very important way. It extends the the range between uh, a transmitter and the earpiece. Now, in in a lot of situations, you know the range you'll find is is perfectly comfortable. I mean, you can get 20, 30 meters. Particularly indoors, you know, it, it is a 2.4 gigahertz product and uh, a 2.4 gigahertz signal really likes reflection. You know, it, if you've got plenty of walls to bounce off and, and metal equipment that you'll find normally in the studio, you'll find that the range will, will be pretty comfortable. If you're in a big wide open space with no reflection, um, you can start to run out of required range. So the simple solution is um, is the Roger Repeater, and uh, yeah, tell us tell us how it works and what it does. Basically, same housing like the touchscreen microphone we saw before. Of course, no display. All you need to do it has to be powered uh, on. It has to be charged. The battery has to be charged. Then you bring the device to the base station. You make the obvious connect, and then you place the repeater where you need it. Maybe you have that at your mixing desk, sound decks, uh, audio area, whatever. You bring this to the stage where the uh, presenter or the presenters are using the earpieces. Then this device will take care that the earpiece always have perfect reception and perfect range. Yeah, and you, you, you brought earpiece. it into play because yeah. you weren't able to achieve the range. So, you know, this is, a, this is a product that you'd have a couple on hand so that if you needed to find a, a, a pocket of the stage or an area where you weren't quite reaching, you can you can then bring this into play and uh, and, and get that range back. Um, yeah, and as Jörg said, you you sync it into the whichever transmitter that you're using, 
And you can see that you're building up like a network of products that all that all work well together. And you know, one thing we need to talk about is the uh, is the LED function here. Oh, I mean, okay. Jörg said to me earlier on, he said, "Look, you know, don't worry about the LEDs. Actually, what you should be doing is listening to the feed. And if you walk away from the unit and then you lose your feed, then you're going to think, hang on a minute, I need a repeater. So you bring a repeater into play, and that allows you to go a further distance." And it's working until you don't get the feed or you do get the feed. Um, so he's saying the best way to do it is if you're listening and you're hearing it, the repeater's working. There is another way of getting an idea beforehand where you're likely to get achieved range with the repeater. And there are, there's, a, there's an LED uh, ring on the front here and the LED colours change on, on the ring and it tells you effectively what the unit is is doing at that moment. Um, so we ought to go through the, the various the various colors of the LEDs and, uh, and, and we'll show you what it does. Okay, what we're gonna show you now is the LED indication from the repeater. So this is, this is something that people do get a bit confused about at times. It's actually quite simple, it's just remembering the patterns. And um, if we show you exactly how it works, then uh, you can refer back to this film. So, um, First of all, you can see that the repeater at the moment is, is flashing uh, blue, but it's flashing quite slowly. So what it's saying is um, I, I'm working, I'm powered, but I can't see a transmitter anywhere. So we've got a transmitter here and I'll switch this transmitter on, which takes a couple of seconds. Transmitter is now on. Look what's happening. We've got a, a flashing blue, but a quick flashing blue. So what we're saying here now, Jörg, I believe, is that um, I'm connected. I've got a transmitter. I can see there's a transmitter there. But really, it's the transmitter is so close to the, to the repeater that there's actually no need for the repeater to be there. It's, right. giving, it's giving the same range as, uh, as just, uh, as just um, a transmitter by itself. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to just move out of shot now because I need to get this transmitter further away from the repeater and we'll see what happens and, um, and, and, and um, watch what happens to the LEDs. Right, so the blinking pattern in blue, which we have right now on the repeater, is the, as we say, fast blinking. And now it is turning to green. And green means the distance or the range between the transmitter and the repeater is in an optimal range. So now the devices are connected and the whole system is really taking benefit from the fact that a repeater is in the system. Now it has changed already to blue and it has changed back to the slow blue blinking. The slow blue blinking means Andy with the transmitter is now such far away that there is no connection between the repeater and the transmitter. The repeater is looking for something, cannot find something, of course, then also cannot transmit the signal to the earpiece. Those are the three different patterns in blinking and color of the Roger repeater. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the next product that we're, we're going to look at is uh, the Phonak Roger Multimedia Hub. Um, this is a fairly new product, so I'm going to hand this across to, to Jörg to tell you all about it. Thank you. Yeah, what it simply is, it's the smallest, lightweightest, and most affordable uh, standalone transmitter for the whole system of Roger. All you have is this device. You can put it to a power supply, but also it will run on a battery for 10 hours autonomy and you have a connect button and you have an audio in socket. That's all this device is providing. So you don't have a volume control, you don't have other functionalities which you will find at the touchscreen microphone or at the base station. But as long as you only need a mobile lightweighted transmitter which just does the job, the multimedia hub is the right device for you. Yeah, sounds very useful. Okay, so now um, we're going to talk about uh, this is a very little dinky thing here. This is this is the guide you. So uh, this is another part of the the Roger system. You know, it can be synced in the same as the uh, the other products. But uh, 
Tell me about tell me about guide you. We were talking about the repeater. We were talking about three different transmitters. We just for the moment had only one receiver, which is the earpiece. This here, this device is the second receiver. It's an option how a receiver also can look like in a Roger system. It's a tiny device with just power on off, with just volume up down, and with two sockets. One is for charging. One is to plug in a cabled earpiece. So this device you can take to get the Roger signal. You wear the device, maybe with a lanyard or you wear it in your pocket, you wear it with a clip somewhere here, wherever you want. And then you take a cable and the cable you put in to your ear. So it's an alternative to the earpiece. Of course, it's not um, invisible. Of course, it does not sit nicely in your ear, but it will do a similar job and it's yeah. simply an option for a receiver. I, I guess a situation where you've got a number of people on set and yeah. one of them needs uh, an invisible earpiece. But there may be other people on the periphery or other, other functions within the, in the production that need to hear what's coming from the Roger transmitters, then this but they don't need a, a, you know, a fairly expensive yeah. Roger yeah. earpiece. Yeah. They, can, they can use one of these. Uh, and just plug in their, their headphone socket 3. Point, uh, is it 3.5 or 2.5? It's 2.5. 2.5, yeah. So um, most people on the world would need a little adapter there. But it's small, so I guess they've made the connector a bit smaller. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this uh, overall view of the, the various products within the, within the Phonak Roger range. We're just looking at the accessories. Um, first thing is this... Uh, very nice, neat looking little charging rack. Um, can be used to power up um, you know, like a, a, a bank of charging for all the devices that we've been talking about already. The, uh, the touch screen and the repeater and the multimedia hub. Four devices at any one time. How does that affect the charging rate? Um, you know, if, you, if you, you were saying earlier on that you could charge, like recharge the touch screen within two hours. Ah, I see, no. Um, if you had four touch even, screens even in there. Have, even if you're four in, they will charge at the same time, at the same rate as if you would have used only one device. Yeah, because you've got so obviously effective. a, a yeah. reasonable size power right, supply exactly. going into there to do that. Okay, so that's the, that's the charging rack. And then we've got over here, just really more of the, uh, more supply of the, of the accessories that you get with the earpiece. So. Uh, the wax guards we remember, the batteries, and this we haven't talked about nope, yet. No, not um, yet. This is uh, cleaning spray. What's special about the cleaning spray? Oh, this is this is a liquid basically, which is produced for the special treatment and cleaning of hearing aids. Uh, we use that not only for our Roger earpieces, we use it for all hearing devices we are selling around the globe. And the reason is it has to. Uh, fulfill all hygienic aspects of cleaning, but at the same time, it also should be very, very mild because some people are sensitive inside uh, yeah, their ear, yeah, yeah. right? So this balance, this spray does very, very nicely. It comes with a spray, it comes with a small cloth and also a remover of wax. You all will find it in the box of the Roger earpiece. So you spray a little bit on the earpiece, you take the cloth and clean it a little bit, and just in case you found some little nicks or wax or whatever, you have the feeler with which you can clean the device. Okay, so it is. Uh, it's the liquid is specifically designed yeah. for 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 cleaning things that go into people's ears. Right. Very good. So that's. Uh, that I think pretty much covers the the whole of the the range of products that are involved in the in the Phonak family, the Phonak Roger family. Um, and uh, we're going to go on to talk more about uh, firstly how they link together, how you actually set the systems up and also some specialist ways of using the product, which um, perhaps we haven't thought about yet, but uh, well, we thought about them because they right. actually exist. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe you haven't thought about them. Okay, I'd like to now talk to you, or we'd like to now talk to you about different ways that you can use Roger that you might not have thought about before. And yeah, some ideas that we came up with and also some ideas that have uh, been shown to us by uh, our customers and said, you know, this is a great way that you could use it. Have you thought about this? So we'll share those. Um, let's talk about the multimedia hub. We, uh, we discussed it earlier on. Um, this can become very, very useful if you've got a situation where 
you simply can't get the range using 2.4 gigahertz between the transmitter, between the, the, uh, the fed transmitter that you want to use and your Roger earpiece. You know, it, the, the option is that you could use the repeaters, of course, but you know, the repeaters are adding cost every time when you're putting more and more in. And if it's that far away that you're trying to do a shoot, um, and you know, it can st start costing quite a lot of money with repeaters. So there's another way of doing it. If you've already got a traditional IEM product you know, on set it, 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 within your system, you know, uh, it's just an IEM, IEM uh, receiver like this, um, you can bring the Roger system to work with this, with, with the traditional IEM product using the multimedia hub. A couple of ways of doing this, but the, the, I guess the easiest way will be um, from the uh, output of the IEM, the headphone output, you go into your multimedia hub on the input, you then sync up that with your Roger earpiece, and then you're gonna to have to ask the talent presenter, whatever, to wear those two pieces, but you can then go the whole distance that you'd normally go with an IEM, and you're linking up from wherever it is on your body up to your Roger earpiece there. So the actual final feed into your ear has, has gone invisible again, which uh, is what we're trying to achieve all the time. Now, that's actually personally taking that and, and wearing these two pieces of equipment. Uh, there's another way you could do this if you wanted to, uh, once again, do a, a, something at a little bit of a distance, but you, you, you needed the IEM to get the distance, the UHF IEM. You could put that as a pack in the area or room where you were trying to get to. Um, and then, obviously, this will then transmit quite some distance because bigger antenna on there, uh, these things do tend to go a little bit further range to get to the earpieces, and you can then cover the area that you want to cover, which is an area at distance. So that's ways of using traditional IEM alongside the multimedia hub to bring uh, an invisible Roger earpiece into the system. Uh, let's just disconnect that for the moment, or not necessarily that, that bit there. It's another way of using the multimedia hub as a standalone item. Um, what you can do here is, as we said before, plug in an audio feed into that. This is one of the cheapest transmitters. Um, once that audio feeds in there, just leave that unit in the area that you want to operate. You can then transmit to as many of these earpieces within the area, within the range of it as you want. You know, it makes for a, a, a very low cost way of using uh, Roger earpieces and certainly cutting down on the transmitter side. A couple of ways of using the multimedia hub. Um, yeah, can we just go through again the, the receiver? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is an alternative to the earpiece. Whenever the obviously the earpiece needs to be very, very discreet and basically invisible, but there may be on set or working on set, other listeners, and for them it's good enough to have a receiver like that. You send the same signal to the Roger to this device because this is a Roger receiver behaving exactly the same way like the earpiece. You do the connect in the same way. You have a volume control on it. You have a rechargeable battery inside. Autonomy of that battery is also 10 hours. You have an off and on switch. All you do, you take a cabled earpiece like uh, any in-ear or whatever and you plug it into the device then you keep it somewhere in the pocket or wherever you like to place it and put the earpiece the cable earpiece, and you'll get that, that right. feed from the, yeah. uh, the roger transmitter which is great and uh finally one one other thing we want to talk about um which can be very useful in a i guess in a larger deployment where mm -hmm. you've got various areas that need to be covered um and these areas could be some way apart, but you may have a, a, a presenter or talent that, that needs to operate in, in one of a number of areas. Uh, we've shown that you, you, know, you sync the earpiece to the, the transmitter and that sends across a digital code. So that transmitter only works with that, sorry, sorry that transmitter only works with that earpiece, which is what we want. You right. know, so you don't, you don't um, you know, get transmission from you know, places where you don't want it. Um, issue could be that if you've got two or three studios that this, this presenter or, or talent needs to work in, uh, they've only got one earpiece, what happens when they move to another area? That transmitter doesn't know them, so 
they have to then go and resync to that that transmitter in area B. Um, there is a way of getting over this. When these two connect, it's sending across a digital signature, which we know links that and that, and it's exclusive to those two units then. What you can do is take that digital signature with a little bit of software mm -hmm. using the uh, using the port on the on, right. on, on the back of USB. the unit. So you piece of software in there, take that digital signature from that transmitter and put it into another transmitter. Those transmitters will then share the same digital signature. And you can go on and do that with three, four, five, however as many, many as transmitters. Like. Yep, yep. So they're then all sending out exactly the same digital signature. So that remote, uh, that earpiece that you've put onto, onto that transmitter will then work with all the others allowing the talent, uh, the, the presenter, to walk freely between different areas where the range isn't certainly being covered between the areas by a single transmitter, but several transmitters now will connect to that earpiece. Yeah. And right. you know, each of those transmitters can have a separate audio feed. That's, that's not a problem. Could be. But it just means that this is already coupled to each of those transmitters before they get there, making for a much smoother transmit transition. Um, so I think really that's uh, that's covering pretty much everything we know about this this range of products. Yeah, um, so I'm sure Jörg knows a little bit more than me, and he probably knows things that he's not telling me about. But generally, you know, I think we've covered it uh, in as much as uh, you're going to need to know if uh, if you're making a decision on whether this is the right product for you and for your production. Um, so really, that that that, that kind of covers it, and um, you know, we really appreciate you having a, having a look at this. If anybody would like to see the product a little bit more, if um, if you want me to to come along and, and do some tests and, and do some demos, always very very happy to do that, and uh, you know, prove that the product works before we we get there. But um, in the meantime, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to listen to this and hopefully it's been informative. Uh, Jörg, thank you very much for coming across all the way from Switzerland. Thank you for having me. And um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back as we find new things about Roger in the for future. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Thank you.